I'm talking to Eric Bohm, Head of Cooperation at the EC Delegation in Zambia. The delegation has recently piloted two political economy analyses using the framework that's presented in the recent EC background paper that's posted on the Capacity for Dev EU website. I'm going to be asking Eric uh, to share some of his reflections about the exercise. Eric, thank you very much for joining Capacity for Dev. I wonder if we could start, uh, if you could explain a little bit about uh, why the delegation felt it needed to conduct a political economy analysis. Well, thank you very much indeed for, for having us uh, uh, share our experience. Uh, um, this all happened uh, in 2009, uh, early 2010, where we were in the Zambian context experiencing challenges um, with uh, governance-related issues, which were uh, uh, leading to difficulties in the implementation, notably of, of budget support, a very limited political and policy dialogue with government, very limited scope um, to support government-owned uh, reforms, and the, the realization that uh, we as a cooperating partner of importance in Zambia um, too often missed some of the basics, uh, some of the basic understanding of um, the Zambian realities. We were also, at the time, engaging in the design of new programs, public finance management, uh, uh, support to statistical reform, um, also a very important program in support to institutional reforms within the ministries uh, dealing with agriculture and livestock. And, and again, we felt that uh, we needed to uh, reinforce our, our, our understanding, our analytical capacity uh, to really have a meaningful impact with the uh, cooperation programs that were being designed. Um, and so this was uh, taking place when DEFCO launched its initiative to introduce uh, a more structured approach to political economy analysis. And uh, we were lucky then to, uh, to be uh, informed uh, with the process and decided then to uh, uh, embrace it. Could you tell us about how you went about organizing the studies and the process involved, particularly in terms of the level of engagement required from the delegation? Well, we, we started um, internally. We, we tried as delegation, bringing on board uh, the colleagues from the operation section, but also from the political section. We tried internally to move forward um, on some of the, the reflections, uh, but we, we felt that we needed some support and we were uh, again, very fortunate to receive that support from DEFCO, which uh, basically made it possible for us to host a number of, of meetings and in particular the facilitation work uh, um, with yourself, uh, uh, Gareth, and uh, Sue Onsworth. And we actually had a seminar in June, which we had opened up to other cooperating partners and some uh, non-cooperating partners to, to really, uh, in a very open way, reflect on some of the core issues of political economy analysis, uh, the foundational factors, the rules of the game, here and now, and leading all into the linking of the analysis to, to action. And from there, we uh, developed the country uh, political and economy analysis framework, and we decided to work more specifically on one sector, which is of critical importance for Zambia, which is the agriculture sector. We tried to feed this into a governance seminar, which took place in July in Brussels. And since then, we have been trying internally to pursue the work. Uh, we believe that this is, uh, should be part of our day-to-day our -day work, and we are now uh, continuing to move forward. Uh, in particular, in the Zambian context, we have now a challenge, which is that a new government has been sworn in, uh, a new president elected previously from the opposition, which is um, compelling us to review some of our, our analytical work, which we will be doing now in the coming weeks. Eric, that, that's very interesting. Uh, thinking about the elections and the change of government, in the light of the political economy analysis, can you tell us a bit about what you think has changed in Zambia and what aspects uh, will remain the same? Sure, well, we're witnessing uh, a very interesting uh, era for, for Zambia with a very smooth uh, political transition, um, which uh, is, uh, we believe, offering an expansion uh, of uh, what we call the room for maneuver. The new president uh, elected has gained much support uh, from the young generation in Zambia and traditionally also from urban-based populations, normally, notably those involved in the, in the mining industry. But uh, what has been also significant is that uh, this, uh, this election around uh, probably linked to frustrations in the rural areas, um, a number of, uh, a quite large number of farmers also 
um, voted for the uh, for the new government, and that was uh, probably a reflection of frustrations uh, in relation to the previous administration agriculture related policies. Um, what is very interesting for us is to analyze foundations of the um, the power support. We are still in the process of doing so. Uh, but what is notable is that there will be a shift um, in the uh, government agenda with a focus on job creation, notably through diversification of the economy and in particular uh, the agriculture sector. Also, the new president has made very clear that he wants to um, support the youth uh, through education development. What will be challenging for us, the EU delegation as a cooperating partner, will be to see how in a context where it will take time to reform the fundamentals of the economy, which still relies very much on copper, see how we can engage on some of the, the more uh, immediate uh, policy changes. Of course, the power structure remains highly centralized, and uh, traditionally uh, in Zambia, voters have turned to the, to the central power uh, with the expectations that uh, it would... Uh, uh, ensure a, a fair uh, distribution of, uh, of uh, services, of goods. Um, but um, again, we are trying to see how we can, uh, how, how the government will ensure a balance uh, between the uh, short-term uh, objectives it set for itself um, and, and, as I said, working there on the, uh, on the, in the more immediate uh, uh, reform agenda and then looking at the more longer-term um, structural uh, shifts in the country and uh, uh, how those uh, will in impact on the political economy at large. Can you give us a sort of general assessment of how useful you found the exercise and whether you have any recommendations perhaps for other delegations who might be interested in uh, taking up this kind of analysis? Well, recommendations to the other delegations is that it's, it's definitely worth getting involved with, um, but it is a very demanding exercise if you want to do it properly. Uh, we are too often distracted by our day-to-day -day work, um, uh, our procedural work, and uh, we need to dedicate time um, to, to really use uh, political economy analysis uh, tools. Political economy analysis is not new. Most delegations have already and are, are, are using uh, political economy analysis in their day-to-day -day work. Um, however, uh, if we want to have a more structured approach to it, it does require time. It does require support from management. Um, the heads of delegation themselves, the heads of corporations um, have, to, have to be committed. Um, and um, also, we need to do some, some, some work internally. Um, uh, we were also looking at our, the skills uh, within the delegation uh, and whether we had the necessary uh, expertise, and if we did not have that, how to use our network with the other cooperating partners um, to, to collectively work on, on some of the analytical framework. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, in the case of Zambia, we're working together with our member states, uh, for example, but also the World Bank, um, and uh, it, it needs to be a very open, uh, open process. Um, what we have yet to do is to engage more thoroughly with uh, non-state actors, um, and here uh, this is something which we are, um, are going to explore in the, in the coming period. I, I believe it, it should be a very critical part of our work, in particular head of the 11th EDF programming, and, and beyond that, uh, uh, we are all, I believe, uh, looking to gradually exiting from uh, the traditional development corporation. So we also need to see how we can use political economy analysis to better influence the type of uh, engagement we have with uh, the partners we are working with. Uh, uh, we have also to really think outside the box once again and look at other ways of delivering uh, on the partnerships. So um, I can only encourage colleagues to, uh, to embrace the, the process. DEFCO has been extremely supportive. Um, there is uh, all the necessary uh, uh, work that has been done to, to help us better understand how to use the tools. And then it's really for each delegation to see how they, uh, how they can, uh, in the local context they are operating, make best use of some of the, uh, of the, of the elements. Eric, thank you very much for your enthusiasm and for sharing your thoughts with us. You're welcome.